In this video, we are going to be testing Prague's most popular restaurants for Czech food. We have four days to eat at five restaurants that were frequently mentioned in the reviews and articles and find out if they are worth the hype or not. Just to make it clear, none of these places know we are coming, so it is not an ad or hidden promotion for these restaurants. In the end of the video, we're going to share our honest opinion about all of them, as well as some revelations we've had while filming the video for you guys. And for our first place, we need to turn the light off. So guys, we just had our first meal of the video at a place called Tiskarna. Maybe you stumbled upon it on Reddit recommendations, because when I was researching restaurants for this video, it was recommended in like 99% of replies. So we knew that it's gonna be good and we have never been, so we were excited to go. You might not know this about me, but I usually don't drink, period. But it's our first restaurant, so we gotta celebrate. almost just like in the cellars in uh, Pozeg. Remember that video? Huh? When it comes to food, we had svichkova and goulash. We went very traditional for our first restaurant. So we just got our dishes. I obviously got goulash, even though maybe not obviously, because usually the knedliki, dumplings, they don't look like that. And that's have got svichkova. This also looks different because usually it's drowning in sauce. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now makes sense. Svichkova's portion was smaller than what we are used to. There was a lot of sauce, uh, there was enough of meat, but there were not enough of uh, dumplings or knedliki, but everything was tasty. Prices were okay, but we also had one of the cheapest options <laughs> on the menu. And it was super quick from the moment we ordered till the moment when we finished our meals, only maybe 20 minutes passed, which is incredibly uh, swift for any Prague restaurant. Maybe that's because we ordered Svichkova and goulash, which are normally pre-made for the whole day so they just have to bring it uh, to the table in general we had very pleasant experience and i'm looking forward to some more food hello i thought you are a toy you're not a toy a pretty doggy <laughs> okay bye for our second meal, we decided to go to Ukroka. This is a family smaller restaurant, unlike some other ones that we will visit later in the video and even Tiskarna, because Tiskarna actually also has a couple of restaurants in the city. I decided to go for something slightly fancier and ordered a different take on the traditional roasted duck with dumplings and cabbage. This one had a steak, uh, it had pulled meat, beetroots, cabbage, and even cherries. Delicious. And Vatsov decided to stick to switch he wanted to order like traditional version of Svichkova. In the end, it turned out to be <laughs> similar to yesterday, so non-traditional. But he liked it. The portion was bigger, so it was more filling. Prices were similar to yesterday. This restaurant had a different approach to clients because in the chain restaurants, they usually want to serve you and get rid of you as quick as they can, so they do everything super fast. But here it was more chill. We like it. We are continuing to eat our way through Prague and our third restaurant is Cantina. Cantina is one of the most popular restaurants in the city. It has a different concept to a regular restaurant because they worship meat in there. So the way it works, you get in and there is a butcher store right at the front. So you can take a look at all of the meats and select whatever you want to taste today. Then you come in, you sit down, order yourself drinks and they bring you the meat and the chosen side dish to your table. We really liked the steak, it was delicious. We got it with a side dish of uh, vegetables. So it was a beef steak, medium rare. I'm not like the best person to talk about it. I only had a steak like twice in my life. 
but this one was pretty good. It was one of the most expensive meals on our list for one steak and the side dish and the two soft drinks was over 700 crowns. It's definitely not cheap but i think taste wise is worth it we like the decor it's in a former masonic lodge so yeah it's definitely one of these like modern places but playing with the history of the place because it's located in a beautiful palace i do have one bone to pick with cantina see what i did there bone cantina i could not figure out the signs on their toilets so i accidentally went to the male's bathroom fortunately nobody was there and so a boner and so a, bo and so a boner god this is so good. We're such a good team. You might have noticed that we only had one meal in Cantina. That's intentional. That's not because we are like so low <laughs> on our budget, even though this will be one of the most expensive videos that we shot because we never go <laughs> to these places to eat. That was intentional to have only one dish here because we are going to have a second one just around the corner. So let's go. <laughs> Cold. Horribly uh, cold. So let's go in. Uh, we are here. <laughs> Many of you probably would guess that we had to put local on the list. Of course, we have been to that restaurant many times before, but we just had to freshen it up in our memory. We actually went to local twice for this video. Once here near Wenceslas Square and the second time it was in Karlin, if I remember correctly. We had different dishes there. So I feel like with this one, we can give you like a broader picture of how your visit to this restaurant will look like. If you haven't heard of local before, you might guess that this is the place where locals go, but it actually means a pub where locals go in a specific area. This is a chain a restaurant, so you have a lot of them all around Prague, and they're pretty much the same. They have the same menu, same beers. Now we went there for fried cheese. It might sound like an easy dish, but it's actually surprisingly hard to find a good one in Prague. Our second visit, we had Svichkova, and I ordered something completely random because I wanted to try something kind of non-traditional, so I just ordered chicken steak with rice, and it was chicken steak with rice. It was nothing special, you guys. <laughs> Price-wise, this is one of the medium-range places, so it can even work for the budget travelers to Prague. And for our last restaurant, we just had to go to Kuchin, aka Kitchen, located right at the Prague Castle. You have a beautiful view of the lesser town from their terrace, which we cannot enjoy because um, it's minus five degrees Celsius, so we had to go inside. But the concept of this place is pretty interesting. They have a kitchen right when you enter, so you can really see the food that you're gonna be eating. It's just meant to be this like cozy, like comfort food, but with a modern twist. So Vatsov ended up ordering meat with Svichkova sauce, which somebody gave us a lot of crap for calling it that way in our previous video about uh, traditional Czech dishes. Long and behold, this is how they call it on the menu. The dumpling was not sliced, we don't know what's uh, going on recently that they are just uh, not slicing dumplings uh, for us ever. <laughs> we have to do it ourselves, but that's okay. So the dumpling was uh, similar to, again, like the traditional fluffy dumpling that you would get, but the meat was uh, was different. I went for something entirely new, which I don't actually know how I would translate it into English because in Czech it sounds like beef squirrel. But don't worry, you guys, it wasn't a squirrel. I would never resort to eating a squirrel unless we are entering apocalypse and hunting rats and squirrels in Petrin Park. And after all of that, we also got a dessert. We just couldn't resist because they had the dumpling with plum jam and cream and um, poppy seeds, sugar and butter over it. Yeah, it sounds as delicious as it was exactly. <laughs> this visit ended up to be the most expensive one in this video, um, which in retrospect, that's only because in cantina we had one dish if we would have ordered two it would have been probably the same or just a little more expensive so now let's go somewhere else so i can share my revelations about the restaurants that we've mentioned in this video we decided to make this video because since our last video about Czech traditional dishes, the prices for food rose significantly. Plus, we also wanted to test some of these restaurants as we have never been there before, even though we live in Prague and Václav was born here. I'm going to be honest with you guys, most of them are quite posh for us. We normally don't go for lunch where a meal costs close to 400 crowns. That's kind of crazy. But it was a nice experience nevertheless. We actually understand now why these restaurants receive 
receive so much praise online. They totally deserve the hype because the food was amazing, the service was great. We had really good time everywhere, so there are no complaints. However, <laughs> there are a couple of things that were surprising to us and we decided to share them. First thing, if you want to try traditional Czech food in the form that most Czech people would be familiar with, these are not restaurants to go to, maybe except local. Everywhere else, the food was served with a fancy twist. For example, the dumplings were never cut. <laughs> That was a point of concern for Václav, that dumplings were not sliced. And in general, the recipes were a little bit different to what people would be used to. So if you want to have like a true experience of the Czech traditional food, perhaps you should consider going somewhere less hipster. <laughs> Second thing that we kind of discovered, that was um, more of a hunch that I had when I went to Lokal and Kuching in the past, that these places were kind of similar like they were created by the same person and that turned out to be kind of true because when I was doing my research I found out that the last three restaurants that we mentioned in this video as well as almost 30 other belong to one companies maybe to one I don't know if I should call it company or franchise it's one restaurant group called Ambiente so we kind of realized that we almost <laughs> made it look like an advertisement for them it is not an advertisement for Ambiente we wish we don't, no, we don't. <laughs> okay <laughs> We just wanted to make it abundantly clear for everyone that we, if we will ever receive an opportunity to cooperate in such a way and receive money for that cooperation, we will put ads and all the markings on the YouTube video so you guys will know that this was an advertisement. They have other YouTubers <laughs> they, have, they have other people who would do the advertisement for them. They don't need us. And the last thing we wanted to mention was a revelation that Václav had, is that all of these restaurants serve one brand brand of beers, it's Pilsner Urkel beers, or other beers that are owned by Pilsner Urkel. And it shouldn't be surprising, actually, because these are the most uh, popular restaurants in Prague. So it makes sense that they would have the most famous Czech beer. But we still wanted to mention it, because if you will want to have a variety, if you will want to try something else than Pilsner beer, in case of all these five restaurants, it would not be possible, because most of them just have that beer, or any other brand of beer that belongs to Pilsner, like Kozel, Radegast, all these beers. Not to say that this video ruined me financially, but I'm definitely eating these for a couple of dinners in a row now. If you want me to have enough of instant noodles, you could give this video a super thanks. I would really appreciate it. Otherwise, I'll see you in my next one. Bye!